Hey Arizona, just because it is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now. Disclaimer, this video, like all videos featured on this channel, is definitely intended for mature audiences. This video is likely to contain profane language, content is inappropriate for minors. Video is not for kids. Welcome to the Dr. Green Dumb Show. Dr. Green Dumb Show. Lots of help on this show every day. <laughs> it's the Dr. Green Thumb Show live on Twitch, Discord, YouTube, and the home site, www.bereal.tv. Our special guest today, Layla Steinberg, up in here. Good to have you up in here, Layla. Thank you. Uh, Thank we you also, for having me. We also have the legendary Psycho Leezy Cheers, up everybody. in here. Cheers, everybody. It's a nice splash you got on today, man. The Beat Nuts watch and the Bulls uh, starter kit, son. What? Um, we got the Treehouse crew, Bolton Blombo, Bra Bro, Bra Bra, and the Dominator. What up, Bra Bro? Yo, Bra yo, Bro. we got lots of red on the screen today. Big shout to Trace as well. He's up here. Yes, Trace. We on, we on fire. Up. Oh, you you cut him out. I get some volume, but I, I got the memo <laughs> about I got the memo about the red. Oh yeah. We're banging today, son. Wow. <laughs> Excellent. We also got my man, Big Bag, Steph Tone. What up, everybody? In the house. Uh, Put the weak one up there right now. He's got the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the strongest up in here. No, we'll talk about it later. But, hey, you put forth a strong effort. All right. We also have the Brosha himself, a.k.a. Sandog. What I live in the house. What Back up? in the house. Um, How, you doing? <laughs> How you doing, Layla? I'm good, thank you. How does it feel to have all the titles, manager, writer, educator? I, I, I don't know about the titles, but I'm so thankful to be here. Right on. I'm blessed. I appreciate this life. Um, it, You know, I know you get asked this question 
identify many that know your history and whatnot. Um, because you met, you were Tupac's first manager, right? I was. What 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 exactly did you see in him? Um, in the in those beginning days, I mean, I I don't even know if it was about what I saw in him. The interesting thing is what people saw in me that I didn't see in myself. And I was an artist, you know, I'm from L.A. Art is where we have our conversations. It's where we address trauma. It is how we work through and find humanity. And I always was identity challenged. My mom was from Mexico. My dad's family from Poland. Mm. We, um, South Central, originally 64th and Vermont. Um, and, And privilege allowed me to migrate differently than those that I grew up with. So from 64th to La Cienega area to the beach in Malibu. And I always wanted to make sense of my journey. And my dad was a criminal offender in this city who became the youngest public defender at Central Juvenile Hall, went on to have private practice and eventually became a judge. So my whole journey has been about what, what is justice and hip hop, was a challenge to to authority it was an examination of justice and injustice yeah. and so i was a young artist asking questions and um it's always so interesting because i guess i have an opportunity to share a part of the story that really doesn't get out but i um we had a inner city cultural center on vermont and I was in the African dance company. I was the honorary non-African member of an African dance company. And I learned so much from African artists. And so the band I was in in the 80s, uh, Orlando Julius, OJ Akamode, and the Nigerian All-Stars, it was Nigerians and South Africans educating people in the U.S. about apartheid through music. And so those were my musical roots. I was in salsa bands and Nigerian band. And so Uncle Jam's Army was really doing a lot in L.A. There was a lot going on. And I knew a lot of the guys that, you know, I think the office was on off Slauson, if I remember. But I, I grew up with a lot of people that were doing stuff in music. And I was always touring. And so every time I'd tour, I was taking tapes and flyers. So before I knew it, I was already entering um, the world of promotion and and supporting artists that didn't have a platform because hip hop was not even acknowledged in the early days. It wasn't developed yet, neither. Yeah. So I always say that a lot of the early work was built off the backs of Nigerian and South African artists, and and that never seems to make the the press. So I have a chance now again to say if it wasn't for. some of the artists that I worked with, we wouldn't have had the kind of promotion in the industry in those early days. But back to what people saw in me, I really just wanted to um, affect change and make a difference in our justice system. There is nowhere you can see race like a juvenile hall or a prison, and it's all black and brown. And my dad was always in the back of my head, you know, just saying, if you're white, you get private attorneys, you have a different outcome. If you're a person of color, the justice system doesn't work for you. And so I saw art and music as a way to challenge that. And I've been working in the juvenile halls and prisons for over 30 years, maybe 35 now, I guess. I'll be 63, I have to calculate right. how, how long it's been. And so Pac, um, like me, we grew up with um, parents of the 60s, parents who were activists that wanted to see change. And so I really looked at a group of comrades committed to making a difference. I don't think I understood how toxic growing up in the 60s was, the challenges of music, the things we faced, the mixed messages we got. But um, I also don't think In the 80s, I had a clear understanding of the privilege I walked in that was different even than my own mother or my family members. Right. And so there was a group of young artists that held me accountable and said, you can get through doors we can't. Your last name will be very um, advantageous. Get to work. And Mm -hmm. so they pushed me. I never woke up and said, I want to manage artists or be in the business. I don't like business. So it's funny I still hear. That you got into it, yeah. (laughs) That, um, yeah. 
I mean, that, that was a long answer, huh? I just that, rambled. That's a, that <laughs> so, was a great answer. So how, how did you meet Tupac? How did you meet him? There, there was a young woman. So I, when I wasn't doing music or working, I was a young mom. I would do these programs in the schools. And the programs were for two reasons. Number one, I felt that we have a school system for people who come from poverty and another for those who come in privilege, and we don't address issues that need to be talked about. So I would do assemblies in all the schools, and I would put these topics that we need to address, like emotional literacy, like race, um, like inequity, and I would build musical performances around topics and themes. And then I would also promote hip hop artists in the assemblies because that's direct access to critical mass. And I was doing that, but I kept saying, um, I would put artists in these schools with me before parental advisory stickers were out. And a lot of the artists that would do the schools, they'd have a, a one positive song and then parents would find out that there was a lot of material they didn't want their kids hearing. And I kept saying, if I could find an artist that, because all the kids in the schools wanted hip hop, and I kept saying, I, I want someone to, to come and speak to political issues and, and address things and, and have songs that made sense in these assemblies. And a young woman named Lawanda, who was part of our group, said, you know, there's this kid who just came from Baltimore. He's the one. And it took so long. I kept ignoring her because I thought she doesn't know what <laughs> what I'm yeah. looking for. And she was right. And, and that's how it started. And we were doing high school assemblies all over. So it was like plays, almost like high school plays. Kind of, yeah. I mean, it was a, a musical assembly was, and speaking. So that's really how it started. Was th This was when he was doing uh, the performing arts schools and stuff like it that? It was when he first moved to the Bay Area. He right. came from Baltimore from a really amazing school, um, really mixed school with kids that were hyper-talented. Yeah. So. Do you feel like right now, because there's a lot of toxic things happening here, most especially in Southern California, um, that we need more programs to, to, to get these kids into other things? Yeah, we're in trouble. Um, we're in trouble for many reasons. Social media is an incredible blessing. It's also really damaging. It, um, everything is immediate. We're a fast food society. Everything is instant. Kids don't know how to sit at a table anymore and, and have a conversation without being on a phone. My grandkids included. I've grown grandkids. My grandson's is going to be 19. It's hard to sit at a table with him without the distractions. So we're fighting media. Um, we don't have the programs that are needed. We came through COVID. And all of you know, as artists, we have incredible power and incredible influence. And I think that um, we have to be honest and we have to look at ourselves. I always say, you know, hindsight if I could do it again, there are many things I would do differently. And I also um, think that we're, we're in the city that guides culture. This is L.A. Everyone in the world looks at L.A. We're responsible for so much that's gone out into the world. And we have the power to make a huge difference and have difficult conversations. Yeah, for sure. I think there needs to be a lot more music programs out there for kids to have alternative things to keep them off the street and keep them, you know, on a positive trajectory. Cause like, I think when, you know, when programs like that go away, there's, there's not too many alternatives, but the streets. No. And that's why I said wealthy people still have the programs. It's people of color and poor communities. Underfunded that Funded schools. Well, Everything's right. depleted. Yes, it's um, it's why, painful. Why is it depleted, though? I mean, we can talk about the way we've designed systems, and we don't have a system designed to serve people of color. 
when people talk about the school to prison pipeline, it's real. Like that shit is really real. No, I, I'm I'm not and, even gonna argue. I'm no, not no, arguing no, with anybody. That. Actually, you know, my no, I'm asking because I'm actually I, I I want to know like you. I I I feel like I share the same perspective. I want to know how 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 do you solve it when it's so often seems unsolvable. If that makes sense, you know what I mean. A hundred percent. Like it just simply is what it is. Like the. It's so much. Like duality is constantly ruling our entire existence, and 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 this very conversation we're having is a, a complete, you know, description of duality. It is, and it is overwhelming. It, if we focused on how overwhelming it is, we might not get anything done, and. The blessing for me is that I've seen such transformation in so many different ways that that I'm going to always believe in the possibility of transformation and that we can heal. And we are um, faced with a country that's really divided right now. It's a very interesting time to be I, here. I say same team to everybody all the time, and that's because people have lost fact that we are like a chain, you know, the strength on, on regardless of either side of opinions is literally as strong as your weakest link. And we're both weak links. Like this is, um, you know, it, it's incredible. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're in, in systems that set us up to lose, yeah. but there is a way around it. You just have to not fall for all the, all the things that, put you in the places they, they want you to be. Oh, well, you, you already yeah. said it many times already, and that is about being blessed, right? The, the, until you recognize that you have been giving a blessing, then you don't really have any perspective on this yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's, I, I, can't, I can't describe it. It's just something you know once it happens. You know, and, that, and I think it can only happen gain, you know, based on... on, on True perspective. You have to have a higher a higher view. You have to go. You have to you have to leave your argument behind for a minute and go beyond that. You know. I mean, and just to further answer your question, I I think that they want to exhaust us so we don't keep fighting for transformation or change. And and I think that it's so important that we have a spiritual base, whatever it is, whoever, I, I think that we have to know there's more than just us. That's right. Um, and it's hard because, you know, I'm in the business of narcissists. It, it kind of requires a little narcissism to sure. to want to be on that stage. Again, or, duality. Yeah, I mean, I even, <laughs> coming here, I'm like, do I have anything to say that's relevant or can I touch somebody's life or anything meaningful? And I question myself all the time. But that's rhetorical. So, you already know you do. But I don't always know that. I'm very insecure. You just I need struggle. to be reminded then, like all of us. Like all of us, yeah. We all just need a little, hey, come on. And that's where this. meditation comes in. There when you go. you're not sure, you got to get <laughs> back in touch yep. and, you know, reaffirm. Y'all listen to Dr. Joe Dispenza? No, I, I've been meditating for years, but, you know, I will look him up. Dr. Joe's amazing. I, I don't know him, but I think I need to meet him because I feel like I... I'm on his marketing team, and he doesn't even know me. But. See, that's great marketing. When you have someone like running your flag, and you, they don't even know it, but you're like, he doesn't well, know. But he's really just because you brought that up, it made me think of it. He's worth taking your time and checking out. He he's a neurologist who has done incredible work. I think Dr. Joe should be in the schools. He could transform our youth overnight. His his work with if stress can kill you, if we can reprogram our brain, we can heal from anything. And, and I would agree then. I think that all of the youth should read the four <laughs> agreements because it's the most simplest, shortest little description right? of this whole thing. And that whatever, whatever uh, perspective you didn't have before, you will absolutely gain after you read this. And it's simple. It's, it's such simple. a small little book. I agree with you. I gave it to my kids. Yep. Hey man, what which what you hand to them to like absorb is everything to give them perspective. Not everybody has perspective, you know, like we were talking about being real with ourselves. Yeah. Right? In in terms of expectation and ability and all that. And uh man, 
you, it, a lot of us got sheltered in our generation. They didn't want to give us certain information. It was just, hey, don't do this. You're better off doing that, but not giving us any background on any of it. But we also saw that whole generation right after us that all got awards for just participating. Which, yes. Which was unheard of. Which was yeah. unheard of. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Yeah. yeah like, no, crazy. you lost, homie. You came in 38th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Work on your game. Work on your game. <laughs> yeah, like, our school, we definitely had to figure things out for ourselves, you know? Yeah, I mean, when you come from from a, a school system that's overwhelmed, and we've talked about it before, I mean, you know, you uh, you growing up here, you know that there's the, a regular system and then the track system, and those teachers are the most overwhelmed. And when you got overwhelmed teachers, they don't always teach. No, they're babysitting. They're just babysitting. They're afraid of the students. And, and moving. Right, looking at their clock. Yeah, yeah, they're looking at the <laughs> clock, but I'm saying they, they are moving students from one class to another every day, and they're not bothering to, like, pinpoint who's, like, excelling and who's not necessarily excelling like the rest of the class and to put the work in behind them there's so many of those stu those type of students they can't possibly help all of them yeah but how many but, families are also subscribed to that that way of living you know where like you know like like the parents are dependent upon the school system so they can simply go work you know what i mean to take care of their kids so the the school becomes the babysitter in that sense you know what i mean and that's why most people don't know what's going on, what's happening. You know, the disconnect is is in that in that category. Yep. What did they call us? Latchkey kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was definitely that. For sure. Yeah. Most of our generation was our parents were out there working, hustling, doing whatever it was to feed. You know, put food on the table, dropping us off. But didn't have the resources <laughs> to have like sitters or anything like that. They also wanted to spoil us, you know, and they wanted to give us what they didn't have. That, you know, we are, I think in our generation is when this all started to become. That's why the next one all got awards, you know what I mean, for doing yeah. nothing more than being there. Yep. Because everybody wanted to give more than what they had the time before. I'm guilty. Yeah. <laughs> I did the same thing. Yeah, no, yeah. it's just, it's the cycle. Yeah. yeah. There, there's a cycle that just keeps going round and round and, you know, uh, you can't identify it if you don't have the perspective. If you haven't seen, you know, you know, as, as you say, from South Central to Malibu, you know, what I mean, that's perspective. Yeah, that and, is perspective. You know right? what I mean? And when and you look at that, when you go and you and then you throw La Cienega in there, the in between, you know what I mean? That 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 is a huge melting pot right there at La Cienega. That's it one. Hell, that's one hell of a jump. Yeah. And then I moved to Panama right after high school. I have family in Panama. I really? did my first couple of years of college in Panama. What what part? Um well, I was in the I lived in the canal area. I um I lived there when it was transitioning right. uh, at a very interesting time. I had never been around any military and my uncle was a commander, high-ranking commander in the navy. I had no idea what I um was going What you were signing for. up for, huh? But I learned a lot. I learned a lot about what happens globally. I learned a lot about America's role, um, or at least the U.S., because Panama's American, so is Brazil. But yeah. um, North America's role in global politics. I began to understand what colonization looks like and the effects of people all over the world. So I think it was a, an important part of my education that got me ready to come back and what it's what is America, what is America's role? Well, um what, for I, the I, Panama Canal? No, just globally, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, what general, what yeah. is the role of somebody who considers themselves a superpower? What what is the power? What, we're, we're what do we want the power most powerful, over? Right? Um I don't know if I agree with that anymore, oh, but okay. um you know, I Pay attention I think to we're China, one, for I, sure. I think we're one of, <laughs> we are not the most anymore, or who knows? I mean, <laughs> But the intention, that. though, yeah. is what's so interesting and how we all ended up here. I'm first generation on my mom's side. I um, have to look at, you know, the role of the U.K. in global politics and the U.S. and 
and people came here to get away from something. And oftentimes people who um, want to get away from something then become like what they want to get away from. So it's kind of interesting to watch the role of um, of the U.S. And, and of Europe in in countries all over the world. And then the transition and who has more power now and what what power consists of, things power over another the power to take land so weapons weapons, <laughs> weapons war where weapons. the money's at define all uh, types of people and you can and then you can define all types of lifestyles and it's it's simply always that uh whichever lifestyle you want to talk about i mean they're they're always there i mean whatever it is you're right they ain't going <laughs> you, nowhere. you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. like Switching gears real quick, um, you had a new venture with with uh, Gala Music, and didn't you? Um, was it wasn't that the company that uh, put out Snoop Dogg's? Yeah, that's pretty uh, much why I'm NFTs? here. NFTs. Yeah, I mean, I was definitely not interested in Web three, Web four, NFTs. It's not my thing. I'm older. I don't have any right. one in my circle or my friends that buys that, NFTs. Not at all. But um, again, my daughter, who I had a partnership with in management for years, uh, she was able to keep me relevant and help me work with Earl Sweatshirt and, and a number of other artists I've worked with over the years. And they are in an age group that is paying attention and that understands crypto in a way that I didn't. And when we named the arena and took Staples away and called it Crypto.com, I paid attention, and then um, people kept hitting us up to do NFTs with Earl. That's kind of how the whole thing started. I was like, uh, eh, I don't yeah. get it. No, and right. I kept saying no, but I ended up, um, one of my old students who's now a really successful attorney, Brandon Tatum, he brought me to a retreat that Gala was having in Hawaii. I went out there just to meet the people that run this company and not to work with them per se, but because we were talking about doing something with Earl yeah. and I did meet Eric who founded the company and he is a big gamer. It was his third gaming company, very successful in the gaming space, but he had an idea that was different than a lot of the other web three companies. He wanted to take, what he's done in gaming and add film, content, education, and music to the platform, but lean in on the gamers to really have it be successful. So he reached out to Snoop to start um, the music. He had gone to the same high school as Snoop, and he helped Snoop to purchase Death Row and really set him up in the space. So they had a relationship there. They already. built one because yeah. of it. No, he didn't know him at the high school. He reached out to him ah. and said, I went to the same high school as you, and I really right. want you to help me with the music division. Nice move. And what they did was crazy. And, I mean, they made yeah, those crazy NFTs. amount of money. Yeah, they were going. And I, they told me the story, and I just I was like, wow, I need to learn for the artists that I've supported, not still, it's not something I'm, you know, not a big Web three person. I don't play video games, but I felt like I owed it to this next generation to get educated because I liked the buzzwords. I like transparency. I like that we have the internet, but it's not transparent. But in the blockchain, you see every transaction. An artist knows if um, so. The splits at Gala are seventy thirty artist favor. And everything that's happening, you see it. So at first, I still wasn't sold. And I do a workshop called the Mic Sessions that I've done for over 30 years. Emerging artists, law students, activists all come together. And I give assignments and topics. And so I thought, you know, let me take 15 of the emerging artists who've never been on a platform and let's try it out with them first. So I picked a group that come to workshop and they all got on the platform and they were all selling out and they were building new communities that are global. None of the people buying their stuff was from the US. And I thought, wow, this is amazing. And, you know, I have Jewel Chang came onto the platform. She was 14 at the time. She's from LA. I'm a big fan of her. She's just my student. 
and she's sold out seven times. So Damn. she sold a you sell a start at a hundred, and you sell a hundred for a hundred. So that's she ten thousand dollars. Sold she them out. Seven grand. I like the math. I hadn't yeah. seen math like that for artists ever. So that was my beginning, and then. I had a lot of questions because they were streaming the songs, but they weren't paying artists. And every time I'd bring something up, they were like, oh, they're gamers. They're not music people. They didn't know. But they would meet the question with, let's make it happen. So that's how I ended up spending a year in conversation with the company and with Eric. And then in December, he asked if I'd like to come help run and develop the music division. So, again, I leaned on my daughter. I wasn't sure that I would take that on. And she said, you have an opportunity. So many of us don't. I'll help you build the team. She connected me with Ryan Rodriguez, who I've watched him grow up, and he's been doing it for a while. And next thing I know, I assembled a team, and here I am. About to put out more NFTs with music, <laughs> yes? But now there's, like, instead of one way that artists are making money on the platform, now there's the live streaming, and then there's the traditional streaming. They're getting about 10 cents a stream right now. What do you get on SoundCloud or Spotify? Like 000 point? 000 point three. What is it? Uh, three, three cents on 10, right? <laughs> three cents on 10 cents or some shit. It, it's like. horrible, and, and we're still figuring it out. So my commitment, um, because I do soon want to take some time and finish writing all these things I've learned over the years. And I'm really interested in, in the curriculum I developed in emotional literacy. I have a nonprofit. I still work in the prisons. So that's my passion. I do music to afford to do what I'm passionate about, and that's the youth. So I, I committed to a certain amount of time to really help build this infrastructure and this new model and you you can go to gala.com and check it out, but you don't have to go to gala. There's other platforms, but I do believe we need to get educated about this space. Right. And then when you get educated, you'll probably want to go to gala because right now they have something none of the other platforms do, and that is they are super successful gamers, and, and that's who is supporting and building community around artists. So the ways that an artist can thrive in the space is you can get your music on the new games that are coming. You can do live streaming. You can just put out the NFTs. You can um, come up with something we haven't thought of, and they'll probably be open to it. It's a multifaceted um, uh, platform, yeah. And it's new, so it's still you know in the process. But I like that everyone has been open and, and that when I first got there, Eric said, we don't know what we're doing, but we're going to figure it out. And he was honest. Everywhere else, it's always been like, this is how it is, and, and we they know. Do, and they don't really know. They're telling you they know, but they don't know anything. They're learning as they go along. But that's that's great when they could be honest well, with Well, he said, stuff. I don't know anything. Yeah. But if you know music, maybe you can come and help us. And, and I just liked that challenge, and I had my daughter in my ear. So I said that, you know, I can commit to a certain amount of time and, and open the door for a lot of primarily emerging artists who wouldn't have a shot otherwise. And they're killing it. It's really exciting to see. Congratulations awesome. on that. Yeah. Thank That's you. Awesome. you. You mentioned a little while ago that you do work in the prisons. And I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what, what's that about and... So 1990, I went in for the first time. It, it's actually a longer story I won't tell here, but, you know, I grew up with at least three people that are on death row at San Quentin. And it's kind of crazy that, you know, you could go to a school and at least three people you went to school with are on death row. It says something about the neighborhood, the school. And I have my dad in the back of my head. Like, what what was the difference? You know, why... Did they end up caught up? And but for you know the grace of God, I could have you know my skin color and my privilege, I could have been in the same situation. We um, we have to look at why and what. So I think that I was always obsessed with that and my father and his work. And then I got an invitation to come to San Quentin to do a show on the yard by Lonnie Morris. And Lonnie um, was serving a very long sentence. And so I went, I did the event on the yard. 
And then he pulled me to the side and said, I really appreciate what you said and that you brought some hip hop artists, but like you have no idea that you are one of the primary folks promoting violence. You are helping to destroy the black community. Is this because of some of the artists you were yes, bringing in? Yes, it's because of the artists who, that I work with were, at the time. Who were some of the artists? Um, well, he, at that particular time, was talking specifically about Mac Mall because we put out a Mac Mall record and the cover of the record was red and guns. And, and the crazy thing is, you know, I talked to Kyrie and Mall and I didn't feel good about the cover. Right. And I had issues, but I always um, second-guessed myself or gave in because of the bigger picture. And I would let someone else's narrative justify it. But back to Lonnie. Lonnie said, I don't care if you have black kids, black family members, whatever it is, you're as pale as you could be and you will never understand some things, but you will be held accountable. Wow. And I just was like, I wanted to come and make a difference and I had some ideas and he just shut me down. So I had to ask myself what my real intention was and why was I there? And then after he challenged me and said the things he said, he said, maybe it's time for you to stop talking and do some listening, and I want to invite you to come at least once a month. I have a group of lifers, and I want you, instead of thinking you're bringing something to us, I think we have something to say, and you might do us good doing some listening and bringing it back to this community of young people you work with. So, so I he was educating you in that. I moment. respected yeah. what he said. I took him up on the challenge, and that's where I began going in to San Quentin. What did you hear? Um, I heard a tremendous amount of pain. I heard that, especially young men's brains are not developed when they're sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. That there twenty are something, twenty five. That <laughs> there are so many young men whose lives were thrown away on one incident. I heard a lot about the justice system reinforced what my father had already shared with me, um, but just so much trauma and tragedy behind the walls. I began to really understand race in a way that I had no clue and thought I understood before. Um, and I just learned a lot. There's a group of men that really became educators for me. And I would take what I learned and I would go work at Central and LP and Silmar. And I began to translate the these lessons yeah. um, from inside. And I had really exceptional access, probably because of my father and Lonnie. I was able I have 30 years of footage where I have access and sitting on cots and cells, having conversations with film cameras going and addressing things that aren't usually shared or talked about that might have prevented a lot of young people had they had the truth. But um, also just the dynamics of gangs that came out of L.A. and the fight for streets, and, and it's really an economic fight. And um, really seeing how that plays out and seeing the control behind the walls and, and the impact it has on so many young lives. So um, I guess I, I thought I entered to give something and in you know these 30 something years, it was really about me learning and, and taking that knowledge and sharing it and still doing it, still have a whole community that are incarcerated that I, um, I hope to continue to make a difference and see laws change and and had so many of the incarcerated folks I dealt with had any kind of program or support system, you know, the story continues to be the same over and over. There's lack of education, lack of programs, resources. It's, and then, li it's literally layer after layer after layer. I mean, literally we could go on and, and on, on and on. It's it's in it's absolute insanity. It's so painful, and, and there are children dying. The streets are still out of control, and we're talking about people's lives. And, and I know I used to argue with my stepmom because she would always say, you know, it's about choice, but you can't make a choice without the education to even know about the choice that you're making. So it's that catch-22 again that you were just talking it, about. But it's so, uh, again, like I said, the layers. We're talking about the air supply, the food supply, the water supply, the 
the poisons in in everything. I mean, you're yeah. literally just being poisoned at all all angles all day, all day. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're expected to actually remain calm, remain sane, and be educated. So do you make sure the weed <laughs> you're smoking is not GMO? <laughs> yes, for I don't, sure. So you have the good the good herbs and plants. Exactly. Because that's another thing. Like it's, we're poisoning you got, you got, next like I, layers. Like of, I like I said, the it, the depths at which this is taking place is all encompassing. Like there is nothing left out. It's incredible. Yeah, I mean, you know, people would rather have the blinders on and deny so that you know it makes them feel better about not thinking about the sure. actual it shit makes, happening. No, it makes sense. Yeah. But, I mean, that's a that's a heavy burden to know, right? But but I'm just saying, to as we're talking about lives being wrecked, you know, like lives are being wrecked in every single direction every day by all of these elements. Like like you really have to fight through a lot, and most of it you're doing unconsciously. You're not even recognizing that you're doing it. Thanks. I know. All right, I'm going to jump in here real quick. Um, Trace, I'm the guy, uh, yeah, I'm up here in the tree. Yeah, he's up in the nest. <laughs> um, in the nest. <laughs> growing up in Los Angeles, and see, I met you probably 25 years ago back at KML down at the radio station yeah. when you used to bring artists to us. So I've known you for a long time. My question is, was it a big, was it much of a culture shock? Because I know you spent so much time up in the Bay Area. You talked about early with Pac up in like Marin City. You you know you managed Mall up in Vallejo and things like that. Was was kind of like the same thing going on, but different, way different. The Bay is really different from LA. What what I would say about the Bay is there's this undercurrent of activism and and a political climate that LA doesn't share. I um I love LA. I'm from LA, so I this is my heart. My mom moved to the Bay Area when I was young, so I kind of straddled both. I was back and forth from LA to the Bay a lot. And the Bay has this um you know, the Panthers were in the Bay. The all the act Activism for anti-apartheid work came out of the Bay. The musicians in the Bay always understood that there's this undercurrent and this fight for change. And L.A., Hollywood kind of messed us up. You yeah. know, Hollywood, but because we were like the communication center of the world and, and art and Hollywood, film, television, music are the language that speaks to the world— we um, had this influx of people. The more Hollywood took off, the more this industry took off. Every transplant from everywhere all over wanted to come to this city. And so those of us that are from here, we kind of got pushed out because of this influx that came here. And so a lot of our city has become very superficial and very transient. I'm not saying us and those of us from here, we have something different. Just in general. But but what happened to our city, we went Hollywood while the Bay was in a fight for um, people's lives. And so I don't think I answered your question. No, no, I, no I, you I, did. No, you I, did. I think so because, I mean, you know, L.A. was hands-off about a lot of issues where in the Bay they protested about Everything going Everything. wrong, and it's been like that since the '60s. I mean, that's what San Francisco. Yeah, it's kind just of always about. been more politically active right. out there in the Bay. It's different, though. I I I, I grew up in Sacramento. I was born and raised in Sacramento, and the Bay Area was also like you know my second home. Like that's where we always wanted to go hang out all the time. And having lived down here now for almost you know 25 years, it's. The difference for me, it, you know, like I consider myself a Californian because I've seen both North and South, you know, but down here and and up there are are different in the sense that down here it's just it's the same, but way bigger. It's just way more of what's happening. Like there's so much going on here that you lose all like what you're talking about the nuance of what's up there, like how they're focused on uh, on on the activism and stuff like that that's here but it's but it's it's in 
it's mixed pockets, in with so much. And we're spread out. Yeah, like it, it, yeah, it's just so time. huge here. Yeah, California is a huge state, so it's really spread out. So you could have two completely different cultures within within the one. But the I'm saying the bulk of the population is here. It's not up there. I mean, it's populated up there, but not like here. You know, the I think some of the differences too. You know, is that some of the the well-educated cats that lived in some of these neighborhoods that would later become gang infested, they put a lot of those guys away, you know, on, on, you know, bullshit charges as we know. Right. So a lot of the leaders in those communities with education to guide young people were put away. So now you have this generation of young people with no guidance and like, you know, basically shown and, and, no, no respect shown and no opportunity and no resources. Now, you know, they're trying to figure out, okay, how do we survive here? Well, the and answer always seems well, to be the obvious one they well, make, right? Well, well, yeah. They're going to get there. They're gonna, gonna, they got to get there, yeah. right? So it's, you know, slanging drugs, robbing, stealing, and, you know, that becomes part of the gang culture where it used to be activism to a point. And then it became something different when you took away all these cats that were actually educated and they were trying to, you know, um, you know, rally for for resources to the community and, and different programs for these kids. You know, you get them out of the way and now it could they could run amok and which is which is how a lot of these gangs started. Right. Uh, yeah. A hundred percent. And I always I, I'm a big fan of yours and I appreciate that you know we get to be real and and have this moment i um i think you've done something that's really important and that that we're really missing i have a big black and brown family um we have not done what we've needed to do to have solidarity in the black and brown community it's painful it um it's been hard to see how my children have been affected. And my reality is so different from my kids and my mother because being pale makes a huge difference. Being white, having privilege. And it's hard to to be as honest and real as we need to be. And even in my own privilege, I was in denial about my children's experience in this life. And that um, I don't even think that that I was, although I thought I was so conscious when I was young, I don't think I um, processed things enough to think about um, what area we would live in and that every block makes a difference. And that um, when I came back to LA in 2000, Santa Monica has good school systems. So I thought I'm gonna live in Santa Monica so my kids have Santa Monica schools. But I actually lived in Venice and used Santa Monica address. And, um, you know, having a black son, how many times the cops slammed him against the fence walking in Santa Monica while black. And and just the struggles that my children would go through and the things that I went through that forced me to, to be more than just the outsider doing the work, but to have to live it. Like our oldest, um, my stepson, was killed by the police in Oakland. I never imagined that I would be a parent of a kid murdered by the police and Mm. that I would have to carry that. There's been so many things in my life that I've had to actually experience firsthand. It's almost like getting slapped in the face with um, that privilege that I've been able to walk in and, and really looking at my choices. And it was a high profile case. You know, he was asleep in the car Mm. they drove by they saw a young male sleeping they said they saw a gun in the car um and a female officer she's a rookie officer she said she saw him grab for his gun she shot him chest killed him once we got the body cam footage we found out he was asleep and i bring that up because the ramifications in addition to the pain and the loss and what my kids have gone through um, it follows you. It it doesn't go away. And so um, for me, I think that I've had to realize that my lifestyle, the music, my choices, the world I've walked in 
it's constantly come back. It is something we can't ever walk away from. Every choice we make, we revisit. And so I just look at, you know, you have this amazing platform and people pay attention to you, all of you actually. And any of us in our industry, because we're in an industry that people iconize and idolize, people worship artists and they worship athletes. So I just believe that every opportunity that we have to deepen a conversation or to have some impact or to apologize for any times we weren't paying attention is important because kids need to hear us acknowledge the mistakes we've made. They need to hear us um, talk about ways we can do better. And, and we need to put material out into the world that has people thinking and have podcasts and shows. And, and there's only a, a small percentage of the population that does that. Not enough people that have that power do it. Um, and I'll tell you one more thing. She's probably going to kill me because I keep bringing this up. But um, I went to New York a few weeks ago. And right before I left, I was going to go because I had Sway's show. And for a long time, I was very uncomfortable doing any kind of shows or podcasts or interviews. I always feel very awkward. And... I was like, has anything I've ever done made a difference? I go through these moments like, does this shit really matter? And we're at war right now, and we're so um, divided about what's going on. And I was like, what am I doing? And I, um, I got this text. I had gotten a couple texts. Is this Layla Steinberg? And I'm like, I'm not responding to this person. Who has my yeah, number? Who has I your don't number know. and asked that, right? And so I, I ignored it. And then they sent me... A, a screenshot of a note I wrote like 19 years ago. And I say, Gabriella, you are like so special, incredible. I wrote this whole thing to Gabriella. Who's Gabriella? It's 19 years ago that I wrote this. But the fact that I wrote this and put my personal number and I'm consistency uh. is my favorite word. I'm, I'm consistent. So I always tell people, I just love that word. So I still have the same number. I said, oh, my gosh, this is from so long ago, but she must be some special if I wrote that. And so um, I said, yep, it's me. And so she writes back. I have the whole thread because it just touched me so much. And she said, you know, you really you inspired me so much. And she just said these beautiful things. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm smiling so big. All we can want in life is to touch someone, make yeah. a difference, and take care of our families. So I responded, and I said, well, if I gave you my number and wrote that to you all those years ago, I must have seen something. I bet your poetry or whatever you're doing has touched millions by now. And she said, yeah, well, actually, you knew me as Gabby Wilson. Everyone else knows me as her now. Oh, and, wow. And she wrote this whole beautiful thing to me, and I told her I was going to cry. It just... I love her. I've been a huge fan. I actually talk about her so much with my students because she's really, um, she's so humble and it's so hard to find that. And she's Bay Area. She's killing it right she, now. <laughs> she is like someone I'm such a fan of. And I couldn't believe that I didn't respond. I usually, it takes me a while, but I, I do try to hit people back, but I just didn't know who had my number. And it was such a <laughs> lesson random, for yeah. me. And she said, I know it's random, but I've been waiting all these years to tell you. So I'm supposed to see her this week. I'm well, really excited. Congratulations to her, because she's She is such an important life. artist. Yeah. Like, if I never got that text, I've been talking about her for so long. You tell her yeah. to come on this show. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy how you never know who you're going to really, you're going to touch them. That know? was my point. See, yeah. you just never know. You never know who you're sitting next yeah. to. That's one thing Earl will tell you um, In when we first started touring. I would always say, like, the people who clean up behind you and cook your food, like, you never know who you're going to trade places with. And you better treat people always. like, I don't care what you think they're doing. They're taking the trash out of your room. The people who you think are the least important are the most important. Yeah. And I think to this day, he's like, man, Layla, I always appreciate Because I went on all his first tours just to make sure we did it better this time. And um, Yeah, I mean, you got to treat people right. Oh, yeah. um, Bolted, do we got any questions from the asylum? 
Yeah, we got a few questions and comments here. We got Mama Cass in the Super Chat saying, Dr. Dispensa pretty much <laughs> saved my life. Thank you for a great show, Layla and everyone. Thank oh, you. my God. I'm so glad someone said that. Dr. Joe Dispensa, when I meet you one day. <laughs> hey, we're manifesting this. We just put it in there. You know, that's, that's how things happen. We got a JCB saying, I'm a fellow, fellow educator here, and I'm loving the guests. Thank you so much to Be Real. Well, thank you. And thank you. Layla for coming. I, I through. never say no to an invite to a school or a facility. All like, right. I, I'm down to show up for the kids. We got a bop up in here saying, yo, big shout to Gala Music. Let's go. I know. And the last one, we got 81X saying, uh, be real great guest today. I have young children and they're listening right now. I approve of Layla's message. Most definitely one of the best guests Be Real TV has, be real TV has had, and they've had some great guests. Well, hey. Thank you. Let's get asking. a round for that. <laughs> Let's do it. Yes, educators are important. You know, especially when our systems are teaching us nothing but bullshit for the longest time. <coughs> we need, so, yes. need those gems. We need those gems dropped. And thank you, Layla, for coming and dropping those gems. And just know <laughs> that whenever you want to come and drop some more, yep. the door is open here. Bring it. And thank we thank you. you for sitting in with us. Uh, on the Dr. Green Thumb Show. You got any shout-outs you want to give? Gosh, um, well, I appreciate all of you, so thank you. Be real. Thumbs up. This is the high show. We're all in here. <laughs> I'm right. on the natural high, but I appreciate the green high. Right on. And, um, yeah, I, I'm still I'm an educator, so I won't say no. If I could add to your agenda or your education, emotional literacy is crucial. We all got to get our hearts right. Um, Yep. And I, I'm very committed to USC's law department. Doctor, I mean, Professor Jody Armour, I still co-teach his class with him, race, stereotypes, and the rule of law. Mr. Checkpoint, you should have Mr. Checkpoint on the show. Do you yes, know Mr. He, Checkpoint? Yes, we've had him, and uh, yeah, he's due for another visit. We've had him a couple times, actually. I, I'm so. just supporting anyone out in the community doing the work. So. That's right. Thank you, guys. Hit right him with, with your IG and all that good stuff. Oh, yeah, where can they find you? Layla Steinberg. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Right on. Uh, we'll be back with more Dr. Green Thumb show right after this. TV. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> From Dublin and uh, man it took two and a half hours we were spent I was very fatigued I don't know how you know DJ Lord was able to go out and dance on tables topless this <laughs> night but somehow he did it cheeky drinks low-key get you fucked up so I was fucked up and um, I won't go into that it took us longer than the flight to get from the airport to our hotel. It took about, I would say, an hour and a half, maybe two hours, if that. You know, the way that they have the streets now and everything, like it, it, it's, it, it's impossible. I wouldn't want to drive here. Parking's messed up. The, the roads are tiny. You got big double-decker buses. All these cars coming from all the directions, the roundabouts. I, I don't know how y'all do it. But y'all do it, but I don't know how y'all do it. It's tough doing these shows night to night, and then on a day off, you have to travel and then deal with, like, you know, an, a whole a two and a half hour ride from the airport that's supposed to be an hour or something like that because of, you know, uh, traffic and whatnot. But, you know, um, and it'd been hard to sleep those last couple of nights so I was feeling real fatigued but due to a lot of vitamins and hydration I was able to bounce back and uh, you know I was rather excited for London because you know London always you know always uh, gives a lot of energy you know I don't remember one show that we've had here that wasn't buck wow you know and that was the the thing you know, are they going to beat Ireland in terms of energy? Because Ireland was just energy. And, uh, yeah, London, England came with it. Um, you know, uh, we were feeling good before we started. A lot of our friends had showed up. 
you know salute to Bobby D came through uh, salute to our boy Kieran came through with the with the squad and uh, you know our boy Kim who uh, provided us with some good stuff OB Trice uh, our boy Miguel from uh, Paris came in a lot of people flew in for this gig from different places you know even just some of the fans that uh, showed up there you know so it was it was a lovely vibe uh, our agent was in the house Scott Thomas salute to x-ray um, all coming to support and you know to see Ice Cube and, and Cypress Hill like mash this thing because there's been a lot of hype for it for a long time Right. To my brothers. Before the show, we did the uh, the uh, meet and greet where uh, a certain amount of people get to come out. And, uh... Real. TV. And now this. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, you guys? It's Ariana coming from you live again here at Dr. Green Thumbs LAX. We're located here at 5494 West Centinella. That's just 10 minutes away from the airport. Uh, we got a bunch of daily deals, uh, rewards programs, 30% off for first time patients. So definitely come and check us out. And back to you guys at the studio. Oh, that was great. <laughs> that was a great job just, right there. Just great. Bodega coolers are a lightly sparkling and refreshing cannabis beverage. Using all ingredients, Bodega Coolers provide an elevated twist on the California Coke Classic Cooler style beverage. 25 milligrams of THC per 12 ounce can and the Bodega Slim can is 3 milligrams of THC with 2.5 milligrams of THCV in an 8 ounce can. For a more subtle and social effect, both cans available in the pineapple and cooler and pear cooler flavors. Grab a bodega cooler at a dispensary near you, y'all. All right. Um, but don't fucking lie. Yeah, it's all live. That's the beauty of this, it's though. The beauty of this Excellent. that it's live. Awesome. Um, salute to the strong one. Let me tell you why. We're not going to go into submissions for a minute because you know we're going to talk about some things. <laughs> what are you talking about? Some things, okay? Well, we went on a ride oh, last man. night. Salute to the LA Riders. Much love uh, oh, yeah. to the bros. We went on a um, on a ride last night. You've been doing those bicycle rides. Yeah, well, this is my second one. Bobo's done like maybe four or five of them because, you know, he started when I was still on the mend from the, the, the hernia surgery and whatnot. Mm. So this is my like, that was my second ride with him. Um, and Steph went with us in Rojo from Red Line Reserve. Went went on the ride with us. And Steph Tone, you know, he brought a heavy bike. Nice bike. It's like a Cadillac. But it's it's you know, it's lighter than it looks, but it's still kind of heavy. Cause he hadn't ridden in how many years, you say, Steph? It'd been a while. You, you know, Would I mean, you I, say ten? Oh man. I mean, yeah, like a, like this kind of ride. Like yeah. That kind of ride over ten years. Yeah. About you, ten you, years, right? How you, far of a ride is it? Well, normally it's a twenty mile ride. So it starts at eight p.m. and usually ends about you know 10 10 30 because these guys ride fast you time know what i mean it, time to and, end for you and, guys and, and listen they're one speed bikes there's no you know no one's rocking extra gears it's right. one gear all free will and all that stuff but one gear and uh you know we roll around the city and whatnot and uh you know for S steph not you know being on a bike and doing a long ass ride like that, he, he, you know, he strengthened it out. You know, it was tough. He had a tough time, like Pedro, because huh. Pedro had, you know, he hadn't been on a bike in ten years, too, probably. Um, and they both, what they have in common in this scenario is they both took the heaviest bikes you could take, were which were meant for riding flat, like beach style, you cruising. know, cruise riding. And we were, you know, like down here, downtown, it's deceptively, you know, sure. um, it's deceptive in terms of the incline here. When you're riding north. You're going north. You're going uphill. You're going uphill. Wow. When you're coming back down, you're, you know, cruising cool. And if you're going like east or west, 
depending on where you're going, there's yeah. there's there's heels there, there's inclines there. And, and I learned that last night. And he <laughs> I know I know you felt I did not I was not aware of this at all until until, until we started going back up north. I was like I was like, man, we are going uphill the whole way. And yeah. then we turned and we hit like the the the, the faintest little hill. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> how many people uh, took you guys me out? How many people are out riding around with you guys? Uh, how many would you say was with us? Thirty of us, maybe. Nah, twenty-five. Prob- probably like twenty of us, I think. Nice, you know, somewhere around that. Nice. Um, I, how'd you wake up this morning? I felt good. You felt it. Yeah, no, I, feeling it. I had a night. You know, I drank a, a bottle of Pedialyte before I went to bed. Make sure I got them <laughs> electrolytes. Yo, next one. Let me know. Yeah, this is uh this is uh you know, we had footage of the ride. E Zone went with us. He went on the bike that <laughs> that Pedro almost died on. Oh my you know, <laughs> But E Zone's in shape though, right? Like cause yeah, he man. works out, he does like he hikes. He hikes a lot. Um he he keeps active. So it was a heavier bike, but he was able to power through it. And I'm saying Steph with that same bike that he's right that he rode on now that he had a hard time with. In about a month or so after you've done enough rides and got your legs back, you could totally take that bike and hang. Sure, it's gonna be heavy and more work. I just need to I need to change my gear ratio. I need to get yeah. I need to get one that, you know, I won't wind out as much. You know, like the like I could still use the same energy but get way more torque out of it. Hey, so we we tackled the set the sixth street bridge again last night. Right? Oh. Not me. And yeah, the, the, this is where Woo. him and Pedro was- took a detour. Pedro wanted to like he wanted another chance at this at this hill because it drained the hell out of him last well, not the hill, but the bridge. It drained the hell out of him last time. That's what almost took him out. So he wanted he wanted a redemption round, but he stood with Steph. So this stuff wasn't by himself. Yeah, huge shout out, Pedro, man. But, and everyone else who stayed back with me. But I'll Thank tell you, you what, salute uh-huh. salute to Eric Bobo. He is tackling hills. He was like crushing it last nothing. night. Yeah, he's crushing he's it. He's cru- like Bobo got legs again. He bro. is so <laughs> into bicycling now that this morning at the photo shoot, he comes up to me and said, So Trace, uh, we gotta get you into this bike thing. So now he now then well, I came you need in. a light bike and you need a big bike and don't do a heavy bike. Yes, it's, and get your legs ready, B, before you even try to get on it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do some uh, running before I get into because that. Because here's the thing, my my hit that slightest hill, my leg said, "No, nah, we're done." <laughs> you know the thing, <laughs> it's the, over. The thing is, is you think it's gonna be some easy ass ride? It is not. They could make it easy, but they don't. <laughs> I already, I already knew that I wasn't gonna be able to ride up that little hill, so I was already get. I was like, "All right, I just gotta get off. I'm gonna walk it." It was trying to walk. I, I, when I got off, I was like, legs were like, nope, you ain't walking nowhere right ah. now. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I don't know if I don't, Lost. I don't live here anymore. But what hill are you guys talking about? Well, Second Street is nothing. This not a hill. Well, yeah. Now look. So <laughs> riding down insane. here, said right. We you don't you don't notice it because you're mostly in a car. But when you're on a bike, you notice if you go like let's just say north on Broadway, every street or north. any street going north, San Pedro, Alameda. Yeah. It's all on the incline up a little bit because it's going up towards the, the hills. Yeah, the uh-huh. foothills, right? Um, so riding a bike, you feel that. And like especially it. a bike with no gears on it. And, and, it's, and it's a slow right. hike up. It's not like where oh. it goes like this. It's just yeah, slowly it's just... going up. So you think it's going to be an easy ride, and unless you got legs, it is not that easy. And then, oh, you know, wow. these guys like to ride up to, like, let's just say Dodger Stadium. That was the... The original plan but we knew that like that would have been hard i wasn't gonna make he, that. that he wouldn't have made that and we didn't want him to make it so but we knew that there was that little detour let me ask you something could like somebody come with like a regular mountain bike or oh, it has to be a fancy schmancy the, these are not fancy schmancy bikes these are like one speed bikes that's, that's what i'm saying like, they're like, pretty bikes they're nice bikes cool bikes uh, like i can't just come in a nah, dirty these, old no nah, these bike. are these are bikes meant to rip son that's what i'm saying they're bmx bikes but bigger frames yeah you know what i mean but no one's there riding a mountain bike yeah that's what i'm saying no so, um, one gear i guess i'm out of yes yeah, one gear bike bmx <laughs> style no you could ride them does it have brakes or does, i mean that's all i got yeah you got bricks oh, it's okay. free will it's free will. It's just one gear, though. Hey, bring, yeah. bring the motorcycle. You just got. To, <laughs> you would just have to get your legs ready. You know what I'm saying? And if you if you if your legs weren't ready and you were questioning yourself, you leave that bike. You leave your bike here and go get yourself an electric bike. 
and you'll still be able to keep up. It's still a workout. It's just, you know, you'll be motorized a little bit. I tell you what, uh, e-bike, you would have never known you hit that hill. Like I said, I, I wasn't in it. I didn't realize it at all going up the first, the first time, you know, because I was just like, whew, man, I'm just out of shit. I'm, I was not ready for this ride. You know what I mean? I'm not even thinking like I'm going uphill. I'm just like, yeah, damn, I'm just struggling. It. You know what I mean? It, it, it's a workout. It wasn't until we started going back uptown again. And I was like, damn, man. I was like, it's like you can't even. It's, it, I mean, if you look way down the street, maybe you can tell. But otherwise, you're just like, man, you don't even recognize it's, it. But I'm just like. It's, it's an uphill climb the whole like, way north. I feel like I'm on the flat street, but it's. This ain't a flat street. It's, I'm tired. <laughs> what do you think, Sonny? We going to come in on a Monday night? Now you got to do it. It'll be fun. Hush your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I would say. Horrible I would say, idea. <laughs> listen, I will have some extra bikes for you, but you got to have your legs ready. Y'all yeah, have the leg, man. I tell you, I'm uh, here to tell you, your legs, if they ain't ready, they ain't going. Like, if you re- ain't ridden a bike in 10 years, like a hard ride, a lengthy ride, Get an electric bike to do the first ride and just build your legs up till you can do that ride without the electric bike, straight up. Yeah, because but if, it's not an easy one. If if you ride an electric bike, like you don't even belong there, man. Like get out. Well, of there. listen, <laughs> yeah, you you, pro- you probably don't, but if you just want to go out for the sake of like, you know, being with all the homies and like right yeah, now, bruising, I you could do that. Everybody has a different motive, but if you're riding together, you're riding together, and that's. that's I think it. if you did bring it, like if you were to have an e-bike in that crew, then your best place would be at the very back, yeah, making sure that everybody at the back is good and keeping, yes. you know, mm-hmm. keeping like awareness on the cars yeah. and all that. You You'd have I mean? to be rolling the the back, exactly. like what they would do in a bike race with the motorcycles, you right? Know what I mean? So bring. if anybody needed to switch, somebody yeah. can, you know, like bring here, w- bring waters and get on this. Yeah. So you guys all in helmets and that type of thing, or? Some guys are in helmets, some are not. Okay. I rolled the helmet. Huh? I did because... not, but you should. Like, I ha- had I had my my head on, I would have brought my helmet. Next time I will have my helmet. Everybody was like, nah, i be. I don't like Because I was like, yeah, I wasn't going to roll my helmet. I brought mine, but I wasn't going to roll it. They're like, no, 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 no. You put your helmet on. Yeah. I'm like, all right. I'll just bring my, ha- uh, my helmet. I felt like a little kid. Like, no, B, put your helmet on. <laughs> you had the, oh, my God. But I mean, the chin strap. I, I sure did. But <laughs> any, time, any place where, where where you have a chance to bomb the hills, you know what I mean? You, yeah, you, you need that helmet on. Yeah, the helmet is in your, is in your oh, favor. Oh, shit. What, what are the homies who's one of the most experienced riders as we were rolling up Broadway? It was awesome. Let me tell you what, though. It was an awesome ride when we were riding through the city like that. And just there was no cars, like, to really, like, that we had to go in and out of. It was a nice, smooth ride. But one of our homies uh, was, he was like popping a wheelie down the block and he lost hold of it and boom, flopped right on his back. He ate shit pretty hard and the bike flew up. And then because, you know, how far it flew up and how, how it flew up, the angle. Boom, bounced on the tire. It was, it was like dramatic effect. <laughs> like he ate it pretty bad, but he got up and, and kept riding. That's what I was going to ask, dude. A lot of, I mean, are guys out there taking spills? Uh, yeah, he took, he, yeah, he definitely took a spill. I mean, you know, he lost hold of that wheelie and fell straight up on his back. He's lucky he had a backpack on. You know, he I, had a backpack on that broke his fall a little bit, but his def- bike just... Me you know, too. That's what helped me last night. You know, was when I straight up, when I went straight down, backpack, I was like, rolled to the back. Boom. That's right. You fell over. <laughs> oh, so you went down two steps? Right into the straight, dirty ass gutter. <laughs> Homeless gutter. I was like, oh, ain't this a I, I look back and I see Pedro. <laughs> I see Pedro's bike outside of this car and then i see steph's bike flipped over oh, <laughs> and man, i'm like oh man. shit so I, I i i break a u-turn back they're already packed up far out you know what i mean <laughs> but i knew he was you know having issues so i look back <laughs> i go back i'm like yo dude you all right and he was like wow, wow. out of shape <laughs> it's out of shape man i was just like this is embarrassing and, and we don't have any we need to can we can we get some GoPros mounted on these bikes? You know, E Zone had the one GoPro. I'm sure uh, you'll see his footage, and those guys film everything. They're constantly like 
They were all. I was. Oh. I'm bringing up the rear damn near the whole time. <laughs> so what? What? What's, <laughs> at, what's at the end of the line? Like when you guys finish the. So we do there waiting for you. So there's. It's supposed to be like two stops, right? Um, one where you you take a long ass bit of a ride, like 20, 30 minutes, and then they stop like at a store somewhere to get you know drinks or whatever and like a smoke. If you if you're gonna do that, and then boom, part two. They tackle one of the bridges, and then at the end, or just before the end, they you know it's to a taco spot. You know what I mean? Right, it's nice. a, and it's a it's pretty dope. It's pretty good. And uh, from there, the ride. Well, since we started here, you know we ride back from that taco spot to here, and it's like about a fifteen minute ride back or something like that. <laughs> if you if you hot footed, it might be. So what time did you guys finish? <laughs> we finished at like twelve. Ah, that's what I was getting at. You said most it's, people it's, at ten thirty. It's not supposed to do. It's not supposed to end like that. It's supposed to be that you know we ride from like eight to ten, ten thirty. But it was like, like almost nine, nine thirty time we really got going. Yeah, because uh. because one of the homies, um, he 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 came late, <laughs> like thirty minutes late, mm. and then, you know, he came with a flat tire. So they had to change his tire, which took another 15 minutes, and then we... Then he got another flat. Then within, Bam. like, within a quarter mile of, of the building, he gets another flat tire. <sighs> and, uh, I you know, they home. fix it again. They fix it again. And he goes on, and we were, I think we're on Broadway at this point, and uh, he gets another flat. Yeah. So Man. at that point... Three flats? Yeah, he had three flats. He had two thorns inside his tire and didn't know this, so it punctured both his, t like his tube twice. Uh. So he ends up, you know, Ubering back, yeah. got his car, and just followed us the rest of the night. But that set us back like 45 to mm. 50 minutes. So realistically, that's why we went so late. And this whole time, I'm pedaling uphill the, on the faintest grade, not even oh recognizing God. it, just... Just like, damn, man, I really, I, I need to do this more. I'm glad I'm doing this, but I need to do this more because I'm not ready for this right now. Let me ask I didn't you, even let me ask real, you It didn't even connect with me that I was going uphill. Let me ask you something, B. Is, is the nighttime the best time to ride? On a oh, Monday yeah. night, yeah. yeah. On a Monday night because, like, at, by the time we ride, all the traffic is pretty much gone. Oh, yeah. There's still cars on the street, you know, but we have, like, a, a way to communicate, hey, there's a car coming from the front or the back or any of that stuff. So it's, it's pretty it's pretty cool, you know, because yeah. it's not a lot of traffic to contend with and worry about asshole drivers. And it's not a Friday night, which I would not want us to do because, you know, <laughs> then you got some drunk asses around <laughs> driving fast and reckless and stupid. But what we did notice that there was this one car on the 6th Street Bridge for like, what was it, like 30-some-odd 30, 30 minutes from the time we got up to the bridge to when we came around it and we swooped around it like a, a big swoop. We went around it like once. We went on top of it and then came back around on it and then we we did a loop and that car was still like going from from uh, west to east, like blowing it out. Like you could hear the tailpipes f for miles. <laughs> this dude right. was stepping on it. I don't know if he was looking to like race somebody or he was just testing his time on the bridge because I mean you like as we're leaving we could hear him like going from one side to the other just juicing it and uh what about it, the police are they messing with you guys out there at, at that time of night they just weren't present they sent a helicopter later but then he disappeared for a second when the helicopter left. He came back on the bridge and was like, "Roll, roll." But what about you guys riding the bikes? I'm asking no, about no, the police. They, they don't mess with you if they yeah. see thirty bikes going. A down cop the saw me the other night. He couldn't believe it was me, and most mostly because I was wearing a helmet. He's like, "Be real, swear." <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm wearing a helmet. I'm trying to influence kids to be safe. <laughs> yeah, you your elbow pads. No, I didn't have those. <laughs> Now, I ain't doing the tricks I used to do when I was a kid, when I was, you know, like, able. When I didn't think about the trick I was doing, I was just doing it. Like the jumps and yeah. all the things. Papa Willie. You know, we're just doing that because we're in a group of people and we're all trying to, like, shine and, like, you know, get it off. These days at 50, I ain't trying to do that shit because I know what wiping out feels like. 
and you know the recovery ain't as quick as what it used to be. Like oh. homie that dropped last night, he was he was down for a few minutes before he got the fuck up, and he's an experienced rider, man. Mm. Only trick I want to learn right now is how to keep up with the front of the pack. <laughs> keep the pace. If I can keep up with the front, that's trick. That's the trick. That's the trick for me right now. I'm like, damn, this is sick. This is I good. seen I seen this dude one time try to bust out a, a wheelie. He popped it up, and the whole handlebar came. Oh, off. that yeah, busted his eye. I seen that. I was like, yo, I'm never if, gonna try a wheelie. If you, you ain't know? put your bike together right, you know this could happen. Uh, yeah. Eric Bobo is in the asylum right now he's walking through the halls of the asylum what's up eric bobo yo, yo. uh once yo, again bro, my bro. man was pedaling like a champ like a champ <laughs> i got man. no question about eric bobo's pedal ability now i don't know you know because he wanted to to try to go to the dodger stadium spot because he wanted to test his his legs because that's a real test i think he could have made it he would the, the way he was pedaling yeah i i thought he could have made it for sure like, at no point did i I seen I seen him just disappear with the front of the pack the whole night. Like, he didn't he, dip at he's all. Gone. He didn't dip at all. He he's, he's trying powering to, up there. He tries to stay at the front of the pack, oddly enough. Yep. You wouldn't think it. There on, him is. Yeah, not on this bike though. Not he wasn't doing none of that shit on that bike right nah. there. Cause guess what? That's that, the big one was riding that one. That's that, cartoons bike. That's the cool hand Luke bike. You ain't riding fast and furious on that bike <laughs> unless you got like Mike Tyson legs. You know what I'm saying? Um and Bobo ain't got that yet. He's almost keeping up on that bike. He was doing good. Yeah, he's on dude. He hey bro, <laughs> he is sweating up a storm on that. That bike makes you work. Your bike makes you work. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You got to get one of them lighter bikes. I mean, we're uh, Pedro and myself and most of the squad. We're rolling on race ink bikes, and those are very light. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna, I just gotta change my gear ratio on that bad boy, and I'm, I'm, I'll be ready and and do it more. Yeah, you gotta do it more. You just gotta get on it. You'll you'll complete that even even going up on the bridge. You just gotta get your legs back. Squats. I mean, I, I don't understand why if if you know that gears will make life easier, why not? Because they're trying to challenge themselves. I mean, they all That's got what I thought, yeah. They all got multiple bikes where they have, you know, bikes with the multiple gears, but they don't ride like that. They wanna ride like simple wow. without all that shit and test themselves Bust test your balls yeah. and it's a workout for real you're relying on one goddamn gear mm. tough yeah man they you know the first time i rode with them they thought i was gonna be gassed i'm like man i do this kid me to I, I live for this type of shit yeah 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 i wasn't out of breath my legs were just like no it was just your legs were you guys smoking like while you ride i did <laughs> i did <laughs> he said i did of course. <laughs> of course not the whole way only on the last half like after we got the tacos and we were on the way back to the the easy part yeah the downhill ride yeah well it wasn't no because the way we went we went back up north yeah, and yeah. then cut a left and then came back down. Pedro and I, I was, I was like, we're gonna be the first ones back. Let's just go back because we're already going this way. They going back uptown. Where are they going? That's crazy. Yeah, we were going the opposite way. He was like, no, nah, I'm <laughs> Still going. Still, they got everyone. We were the last ones back. I was like, man, this is meant to be at the back tonight. Hey, we were hot footed, bro. <laughs> it should, was moving. We should I, go one day in the daytime, like to the beach or something, just ride around. You know, it's it, nice riding around yeah. downtown, And drink man. beers. I, I, drink I beers, it. yeah. Stop. You know, that, that, that's what I like. I really, I, I like, actually, you know, because what I've really been into a lot lately is is i actually been enjoying seeing all this graffiti, you know what I mean? Them towers, man, seeing what people go through to put their names on them on them buildings. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. That That's a lot right there for, for, for the art and, and just for the, even the cause, you know what I mean? Just for the, the notoriety. Yeah, it's for the notoriety. I actually saw those towers for the first time in person not too long ago. And uh, it's even more impressive in person than when you see it on TV. Yeah. Or, or the socials or whatever. You see those buildings just hit up. Yep. You're, it, it makes it more of a grander thing. Like, wow. Like, there was a fool standing up there yeah. on the ledge. Like, there ain't no, there's no balcony there. He's on the side of the building at 20 yeah. floors up. Yeah. yeah. Like, hell that no. Part. <laughs> that part. There's no stability. The, no security there for you. There's nothing. You one there. wrong slip. The wind. It just yeah. gust of wind blow you right off. Yep. Or if you got dizzy for some reason. Because you know there ain't no big fat boys up there on that edge. Yeah, look at that. 
Look at that. I mean, he's got a few steps, but still. Still. Mm -hmm. if, if you're afraid of heights, that is definitely not your thing. Yeah, that is not the business. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's get into a few submissions here real quick. What? Time, time, time. Submissions, submissions, submissions. 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 All right, first submission of the day. You guys are going to like this one. We got Reiki up in here, made a little French toast for y'all. French toast. She's going to be showing off her little breakfast dish. She's got some, uh, she says she wants to make us French toast when she comes to L.A. as well. Bring it. Come on. I Just dare you. down on the griddle. I dare you. I love some French toast. You don't like French toast? Man, if I turned that in right there, you guys would be clowning me. Did you see those? There ain't no French toast. No, my bad. She wants to make us French toast when she comes to Them LA. Hash Here's browns. her breakfast the you other night. Uh, my bad. Bring, bring it Bring it on. <laughs> I will, got I will, titties out. I will <laughs> eat, the, yeah, eat the shit out of that yeah. plate, though, right I would, there. too. I, I don't oh, know if I would be putting the, the syrup on the, the sausage. But, I would. That's or, great. Or the eggs. Or the eggs, yeah, no, I wouldn't be doing that. Titties out is fine. Them hash browns. The, the, uh, that's a hearty ass fucking breakfast, man. Yeah, Let me that's tell you. going going back to sleep. That's a lot of that pepper. Yeah. That's going sleep. Yeah, yeah, you getting the itis yeah. right there. You smoke a joint and you out. I cook that sausage a lot more though. <laughs> yeah, it'd be burnt up all the way around. A little bit more. Yeah, you know, a little ketchup too. Why not? Excellent. All right. All right, next in here, we got uh, AJ Sense. He's saying he made a little teriyaki salmon, broccoli, and mashed potatoes. Ooh, that looks healthy. That looks good. I would uh, definitely have that. You've been a little heavy on the taters. That's a quality plate right there. Yeah. A little that's heavy on the taters, it. but. Respect. Yeah. That's heavy? For me, yeah. yeah. That's too much potato. Did he already take a couple of bites out of that piece of salmon right there? That ter right there? There's a couple of pieces missing. I don't think Could so. Wait? I think it's just the way it, it breaks down when you, when you bake it. Hmm. Huh. You guys like teriyaki sauce on salmon? I do. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Why not? Teriyaki. Barbecue teriyaki. Teriyaki salmon's wow. great. Those look like cheddar uh, potatoes, too. Cheddar potatoes. Yeah. Bring it. Yes, please. We got Mike. He's saying uh, late brunch. Got a little ham, egg, and cheese sandwich. Saying All let's right. go. Okay. Old school. Banco jamón. There you go. Banco jamón. I'm with it. Jamón y queso. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. Oh. Um. We got Mizzle up in here, made, made himself a little smash burger for the wifey and himself. <laughs> Boom, on the brioche. That shit is smashed. Yeah, nice char. I don't mind this at all. Nope. That's Bring it. Fun. Yeah. Nice ratio bun to burger. It is smashed. <laughs> if we were rating that burger like a joint, though, I got to tell you, that big the ass. look. Yeah. That big ass chunk hanging off the side. Like, just <laughs> yeah, pull yeah, that yeah. off and eat that already. Yeah, that's just an extra right yeah, there. Let's that's, go. That's a nice bite right it's there. It's called the diving board where you dive in. It looks like it's sticking his tongue out. He's yeah. like, eh, eat me, fucker. But that's the best, that's the best <laughs> bite of that whole burger right well, there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just eat that bite already. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best bite. It's very I would, tempting. I would be I would be chewing on that bite while I'm taking my He probably picture. did. That's the first bite he took. Yeah, oh, for sure. No, there's hey. no way it wasn't. There's no way it was. It. Yeah, you have to. For sure. It's looking at you. Out of obligation. Oh. <laughs> it's going to fall it. off if you don't. <laughs> Ask Sin about smash burgers. What's, what, you know, what, what's I think I've told this story, haven't I? <laughs> he hates smash burgers. No, hates he doesn't smash get burgers. it. No, they, the one time, I, I forget, we were in the rehearsal room and or somewhere, and they, what do you want? We're getting smash burgers. I'm like... I didn't understand that they were smashed. I thought they were like a smash. <laughs> oh. Best burger of all time. When I get this, I open it up and there's this burger. It's, you know, looks like Look. something from the Depression era. <laughs> so you should have ordered a double smash. Yeah. Double, double it up. That's he said, a, what happened to my burgers? <laughs> hey, we were talking about this the other day real quick before we get into the next one. You used to eat sandwiches with potato chips in them, right? Oh, man. I'm not making that up, right? I still do. I mean, I still. No, I, I'm asking Sen specifically. Oh no, I mean, I have before, but it's not nothing that I do all the when time. When you were younger, right? Yeah. You're 18, early 20s. Uh, probably yeah. Yeah, I, I remember it. 
What was what, what, what was your favorite chips to go with your sandwich? Doritos. Mm. Uh, okay, yeah, that's what I remember. I like I like barbecue chips. And what what, what chip good. did you use, uh, Steph Tone? I like the barbecue lays in yeah. in, okay. the, in the sandwich. That's the same one you use less. I like barbecue anything barbecue chips. How, how about you? Regular lays. On peanut butter and jelly only. That was the what? only time I would do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One out of five don't do this. A little no. Elvis sandwich. I'm no, the one. That's not a sandwich. I didn't never put <laughs> chips in my in my never. um sandwiches. The other day, like when we were talking about it, <laughs> C minus said he made a Dorito sandwich. I'm like, what is that? Like Doritos on top of the sandwich? He goes, No. Dorito sandwich. I just got two loaves of bread, put the Doritos in, and wow. ate the sandwich. Projects. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's different. I've never heard of that. I used to remember Sen. Right I used to remember putting Sen, Sen putting uh, chips in the sandwich, but never eating a Dorito sandwich. That's different. All right, that's next one. I was just going to say, wait, Trace, you do this peanut butter and jelly sandwich with chips? Right there. That's the look. Man. Wow. There's actually a photo of it. There it is. But uh, the wheat bread, savory, it's sweet, sweet and savory. Yeah. No, you need Wonder white bread. Wonder. Yeah. Trace, when are you gonna submit one of your fancy meals that he you had? I gonna... did it the other day, Sen, and these guys all clowned me. I'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, you know we didn't clown him because of what he made. We clowned him because he splashed like a half a gallon uh, of salt yeah, on his tacos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I, okay, <laughs> little, little ass tacos. You went heavy on salt. <laughs> little ass. Salt. He had more oh, salt than taco. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was our only comment was the salt. The, t- the, the salt made the, t- the uh, salt made it look like a taco. Yeah, yeah, but then they make a highlight reel out of it, and then I come next week and re- it's on a loop. Hey, and, hey, it's like, and that long hey, ash hey. just hanging off the joint. Yeah. Like, when's that ash hitting the taco? Said it was like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you need some taco to go with that salt? Oh. <laughs> so, look, yeah. wow. Here it goes, Sen. Look, look, here it goes. Oh, they got it. Salau. Damn, that was that was some salt, right? With a little bit of ash right there <laughs> popping up. That's that it. Yeah, put it over the head. Little <laughs> ash. That's, it. That's very oh, wow, wow, Chef wow. Ramsay of you. Uh, <laughs> right. Thank you for bringing that up, Sen. All right, wow. next. Okay, God. well I didn't know so. <laughs> now I do. I put my own salt on the tacos next to <laughs> your crib. Fuck a be real TV. Fuck a green dog. You gotta check it out. I don't do the fucking weed myself. I like the fucking cocaine. Especially sniffing off the strippers' ashes. At the motherfucking bay. Don't need some problem. Big dude, big boogie. I'm right here at the Dr. Greenthum show. The highest show in the world. Hey, yo, check this out. This is the legendary Spoon B, and I'm at the Dr. Green Thumb Show. Let's go. Shout out Be Real TV, baby. Shout out to Be Real, the Dr. Green Thumb Show, everybody. Shit is incredible. I loved it. Can't wait to come back, man. Westside, Young Casey, Reggie's Pizza Carrots Internationally in the building. And now we open up the doors to the insane asylum. That means y'all got a comment, question, shout out, suggestion. Pop it off, B. But right after this show, the mix show, Real Psycho. Make sure you check it out. <laughs> nah. Welcome to the insane asylum. All right, let's do this. We got uh, Savannah saying, yo, Steph Tone, you can come up here to San Francisco and do the hills up here. Ooh. Oh, yeah. oh we don't want no part of those hills, oh. bro. Already been up and down all those hills in, in my youth. How about if we? And it was l- punishing then. Lombard Street on the bikes. That oh, would be fun. That would be. I mean, I don't. I mean, yo, just going up those hills in a car is tough. Imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah bike. depending on the car you're in. Yeah. They, like, ha- uh, they have an event like it's it's near Golden Gate Park where they bomb that hill. Was it Fell Street? Fell runs along the you know park. I mean? uh, you know, I don't think Woo! it's. Yeah, I don't think I don't it's know what they good if we bomb any hills. Man. Oh man, <laughs> they're they're we got it's a tour? All, Yeah, it's skateboards and bikes and fools. Just I mean, just I mean, it's a long hill. Yeah, yeah. Fell Street's a long all the way to the beach. Yeah, yeah, you know the the dudes that ride up there, they're in good shape with that shit because they got nothing but hills to ride out yeah. there. Yeah, oh man, they're crushing it on, on bikes out there and skateboards. They're like, whew, man, yeah crazy all right he's gonna say your little hill bomb fail Look, yeah oh. hill bomb fail he, whoa, whoa. He, he got a wobble right here boom oh. that's up you get one little wobble you done baby. soon as the speed wobbles come in yeah. 
You know, if you if you ain't a master, what the fuck is he riding? Well, that's what we're gonna discuss right now. Once you put that thing on top of the skateboard, on top of wearing the robe, you oh, already knew this was yeah. coming. This was that. This was the yeah inevitability here. Yeah, this was this was meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he's going fast too. Yeah, man, that's a serious hill. He, I hope he's got layers of clothes on because yeah. the scrapes that happened from this. Oof, that's not a friendly fall. Oh. Your hands, just your hands alone right there, man. Yeah, man. These falls are tough. That's why it's good to rock jeans and tough. Guys. You know, if you're going to do it like that, be bombing, you better be wearing three pairs yeah, of You better have some leathers. And, and some knee pads. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leathers, like padded gloves. Tough, tough clothes. Yeah. All the things. Padded everything. Mm. All right. Big up to C minus. He's rating us with his Twitch party. Salute to C minus. Yo, easy. Twitch rating. We got the Gooch up in here saying, "Yo, B, today's my birthday. Just wanted to say I enjoy watching the show and being part of the 5150 fam. Salute to you and everyone on the Doctor Green Thumb crew." Thank you, sir, and happy birthday, uh, Gooch. Happy birthday. Yep. Yeah, squeeze. Salute to you, man. Uh, celebrate yourself with all your bestest friends. Smoke some good weed. No boof at all. You already know. Get drunk. We got David saying all these East Coast rappers getting busted. <clears throat> Diddy, now who's next? Disgusting dudes, man. Uh, now he's hiding. <sighs> definitely a hot top. Definitely not a topic to be ignored. Hey, Diddy is all over the news. Like TMZ had at least six stories of him today. Like, yeah. you know, they got, they got all their other stories, but every other story is dude. And social media itself is just. Damn. It's out of control. Yeah, it's every story, every news outlet, every media outlet, and at this point, like a lot is being said. But I'm gonna, I'm sitting this one out just for a little while because there's so many different stories being told. I just let it unfold. There's a lot of nuances. Exactly. Going on so here. everybody, just be patient yeah. and let let it steer its I don't, course. I don't, I don't think they got anything on Diddy. You know, so. I don't know. They don't raid three homes yeah, but like that it, it. when if they don't have something. Don't let the circus in town distract you. Big time. Pay attention, people. Yeah. Well, again, they don't raid your, your crib, three of them, on the same day for nothing. And take away your kids in cuffs. Yeah. Well, well, we'll see how we'll see what happens. You know, know what I'm saying? Seems like there might be something there. I don't know. Maybe it's me. It could be, maybe not. Yeah. It could be, maybe not. But we'll see. You know what I'm saying? It's just he's all over. It's like undeniable right now that like he my, is my final midget in the closet or something. You know, true that. That's a that's that's a possibility. That's a thing. That's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, listen. He's he he's been like in the last couple years. They've been it. It's you know a tough time for dude, and it just got tougher. Um, we'll see what happens, though. All right, next. Next up in here, we got GB saying, we need a yellow wristband for Steph Armstrong. Right on. <laughs> we got Mama Cass. You guys were talking um, with Layla earlier. Mama Cass is saying, we need to move back to a traditional life where one parent stays home. Yep. Yeah, well, uh, well uh, you know. Um, send dog is your, your turn. People will <laughs> argue that. Right. Like the thing is, is if you got uh, two people and their jobs ain't paying enough, one job ain't paying enough, you got to, you know, the other person got to work. And sometimes that ain't even enough. So, like, what do you do? So, you know, it's 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 kind of hard. Like, in theory, yeah, you're right. One, one parent should be home with the kid, but that, that's not always the the case. Due to life circumstance, Big well, shout especially out. when you can, you have to consider that most people don't have two parents. Or if you, yeah, if you're a single parent, yeah, it's a lot of single parent families. I mean, that's how I grew yeah, up. It's tough. Yeah, I was gonna say, big shout out to Layla. I mean, that lady, man, for the last 25, 30 years. I remember when I met her back up in the Bay Area. She's uh, awesome. Oh my God, that she is just a soldier. She has been like that. That lady has not changed eh, since the day that I met her. She's a soldier, man. She's a real one. Yeah, salute. Yes, definitely. Need uh, more more people like her. Yeah, I'm on. We got a, let's see, my ferret stash, my weed saying, can I get a happy birthday to my dear daughter, Marisol, a.k.a. Buggy? Happy birthday, Marisol. Yeah, yeah. Buggy, oh, happy, birthday. Birthday. happy birthday. 
the Big 15. Much love. You keep out of trouble, Mighty Soul. <laughs> you said that as soon as you heard 15, huh? <laughs> he was like, you stay out of trouble. <laughs> For know. real. One more year till you can get your license. Let's go. Hey, don't. <laughs> you don't stopped that up there. <laughs> yeah, what are you don't trying to do? To hurrying things up. <laughs> Before you know it, she's going to be asking for a car. Oh, that's right there. It's coming. Yeah, next Don't, year. You can't get away from that one. We got a Papa's, Pete's, Papa's Pieces saying, to everyone affected by the bridge that collapsed in Maryland today, love and light to people that, who lost a loved, loved ones. That shit was crazy. Have you guys seen that? I haven't yes. seen it, yeah. but I heard about it. A container, a container ship ran into this bridge in Baltimore, collapsed the fucking bridge. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah, you got you. Do you got footage of that? Um, I don't have footage of it. I got a picture right here. Oh, for you yeah, guys. bust the picture out. Last time I heard, they were uh, looking for two people, I believe. Yeah, apparently they lost power. They got like a SOS or something from the boat. It's happened something happening on the boat. Um, and then it just, they so I what, guess it, they lost control. It crashed into the bridge. It crashed into the bridge. There was cars on going. I don't know the if bridge. there was cars on the bridge, but it People collapsed. Or I don't know. Was it a low bridge and and like not meant for those ships to come through? Like that boat was going down the wrong wrong way. No, it looked um, that way. No, that I think there was a, a place for it to go, or maybe it, you know, like uh, I I don't know. Maybe that he like went off course or something. Cause it doesn't look like it was meant to be a way for yeah like that he, yeah like that ship was yeah. not in the lane it was supposed to be it was in. not in the lane it was supposed to be at all foul ball but they said that they lost that 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 they lost control of the ship that there was like a SOS signal that went out saying that they lost control of the ship so it just drifted wherever it was wanted I, to go I guess so yeah that's what I'm saying like. When it happened, it was on a course for this. Yeah, they had. There was nothing they could do. Yeah, they they, they have a like, different pilot, right? That from it, it takes it out of that area that it's docked in. He takes it out, and then well, the, the then then the captain sails it from there for wherever they got to go. Right. And, generally, the tugs will bring it out. Yeah. So yeah, it wasn't watched, like yeah, so we it wasn't port so, all the time. And so it wasn't tugs. the main captain of of that mm-hmm. particular vessel that that brought it out wow yeah mm-hmm. something like that all right what else you got i was gonna just show you i got it right here Ooh, wait. yeah see it's not meant for a boat like that to go under was there cars on it that looks crazy i did read there was some cars on there oh yeah that yeah, that's not nuts. Just... damn oh took the whole bridge God. out yeah Bridge is done. Took it yeah. all out. I believe owners, six construction workers were on there. The company that owns that uh, vessel, they're oh. fucked. Oh, it's over. Collapsed the whole so you, center you of the bridge. You think it was mechanical problems, probably? Well, that's what they're trying to because, say, but who knows? Because if you're on the boat, you could actually see, like, yo, we're not going to make it through this shit. We could stop it if we, they could. You know, maybe they couldn't. Yeah, they, that's what they're saying, that yeah. they lost control of the boat. Like a mechanical failure or something like this, and <laughs> but it took out like it hit right at the support. Yeah, and that took that literally took the whole span out. But the question would arise, like B said, if there was pilot tugs bringing that thing in and out of that harbor like they do, why couldn't a tug got in front of it and you know kept it from coming? You see the size of that thing? Well, that's the whole thing too. Is like they don't boats like that don't go in or out without tugs, right? Like, if you like, lose control of whatever is like the tugs are what pilots pilots the boats in. If if you lose if you lost control of how you steer this ship, but the engines are run, are running, that's what's gonna happen. Oh yeah. So some something malfunctions. Things the size of a building. But we're gonna we're we're gonna obviously find out more. I mean I mean sometimes later. they do things like this on purpose just because they want to reconstruct things move things or it may fix things to something else. yeah but i, I don't think that's pretty would. catastrophic just to yeah just to replace yeah, I mean, a bridge it is <laughs> but that's that's the that's what we know nah, that, well so a, it's either that's it, a fuck up it was either piloted there intentional intentionally or it was out of control and it went there because there's uh, that's, that's what i want to believe it, well, it's because it was going <laughs> there was no passage for that boat 
under the bridge well, that's anywhere what, that's, anyways. But, like, even if it would have hit the clearing. But that's what I'm saying. It was out of control. They reported that they lost control of the boat. Which is most likely the case. You know what I mean? All right. All right. We got a, <laughs> let's see here. We got JPH Monsler saying late night bike and smoke and cruise like it's meditating. Yeah. Saying. It can be. It definitely can be. I mean, I, I, it's cool. I, I love to ride in the first place, but riding at night on a Monday like that, it, Ooh, yeah. that shit was dope, right? It was great. I had a great time. Like I said, uh, I'll bring, uh, I'll bring uh, some beers uh, next I, time. My, uh, I'm glad to have done it because that's what I need to do. That was the whole entire point of getting the bike to begin with. You know what I, I mean? Think, yeah. I think since. But I was like, since, I was not prepared for it. I was like, whoa, damn. I think I think since. Well, I'm ready. Uh, you're going to snap in quick, though. It, it, oh, it yeah. ain't going to take you long at all. I don't think so. What would you say? I was just about to say, I think Sin is down for the, the beer and ride. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time, yeah. Boring it. Probably. You still, do you ride bikes at all, Sin Dog, right now? I do, yeah. Oh, uh, so you could hang with the ride, most likely. Yeah, and I, I try to get my cardio in every day, so the legs it, are there. Is it a stationary bike, or do you, like, ride, ride? I got both. one. I got one of each. I got an e bike and I got a regular bike. Oh, oh you got an e bike. Yeah. Yo, so the e bikes you could you could actually put it to pedal just to be a regular bike. Yeah. Oh, well, you would you, you, you could never adjust the level that the the battery will assist the pedaling. You yeah. got one of those. What are they called? Pedal Pedaltons? Pendletons? What is it? Name of the company with the bike that you have? Oh, the stationary one. Yeah, yeah. Peloton. 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 Yeah. Like, do you do those videos with those guys that work out on those things? Ever? Yeah. Come on, said time to get up. No, I don't. I don't like. They don't. Know. I just watch a video that right, it right. already has. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Subscribe to a class or nothing. Oh, okay. So just, you, th so that you can follow their videos and that type of stuff. Yeah. Does oh, it, okay. Yeah. Does it track the calorie burn? It, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Peloton, advanced. All right. Uh, let's see. We got Marbell up in here saying Haji Sheik, Greenspans and Dinner, Loke ah! Loke, Blue Side, he's saying. Oh, shit. He said what? He Blue said, Side. He said you owe him, you owe him dinner and grease beds. <laughs> well, I don't need, first of all, I don't even know who the person is he referred to, so my name is Sendog. It's about time you learned that. Uh, and then what was the rest of the quest, the comment? He said Greenspans and Dinner, Loke Loke, Blue Side. <laughs> Loke Loke, That's huh? Marbell right there. Yeah. You know. I, I got you one of these days. You just hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small world. Yeah. We got Chris saying, I smoked fatties with Send Dog at SRH when he was with his metal band. Oh, word up. Nice, nice. Awesome. Rehearsal spot. No, uh, that was at the recording studio, uh, SRH, uh, Kevin Zinger spot. The, 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 oh, right the, on. We're doing yeah. the SX10 thing. That's right. Um, Good to Kevin yeah, Zinger. Um, yeah, I'm sure we did smoke some joints up in there. We got Greg saying, excited to see you guys perform in Detroit. Let's get lit. Let's go. Bring it. Come on. Take them to Detroit. No. E-Town. No. I'm an M. <laughs> we got Eric V saying Dino GT. That was my bike back in the day. Yeah, GTs man. were dope. Yeah. Red line GTs, Torkers, PK Rippers, Mongoose, RO, RO, Trax, yeah. Yeah. FMF, BMX. There was another one. I can't remember the name. Cook Brothers. Cook Brothers. But that's all the old brands, though. Yeah. Banana, La La banana seeds. Remember those? Which ones? Banana seeds. <laughs> on the Schwinn's. Those were on Huffies and Schwinn's. Five gear. Yeah. That, there's only a few of them that still exist. Like Redline still exists, right? And what, GT? And, I never and, had one of them. And maybe Haro. All the name brands are around. They're still, still but around? I'm, but I'm saying there's a, you know, a, a lot of the, you know, the companies that, you know, the, the riders are riding in the scene, you know, it's a, a lot of the newer companies, you know, and, and more tailored to what they're doing, you know, all the street, you know, style riding, you know, the big jump riding, the trail riding, the racing. There's a bike for every aspect. All of it. Yeah. Yo. That's real. You remember the Huffies? Yeah. Crazy. Those were heavy ass frames. Those were like that a was my first bike. I had, I had a 24 inch hoof. That's the when I was my, for my first bike. That's the beginner bike. That's the. It had a big old wide ass seat, like an evil to evil <laughs> seat. Remember that? Yep. 
and all the other bikes like that were more advanced had the rider seat like like you see today but the huffies had that big old fucking <laughs> yeah, just put your ass on this big ass seat you'll be all right <laughs> And they try to make it comfortable, but those bikes just ain't practical. Hey, man, I learned how to hit jumps on a Huffy. I ain't even yeah. mad at Huffy. Oh. I, was, I was jumping my friends on a Huffy. Oh, yeah. Garbage cans, oh. setting up ramps. We, yeah, we were, we were building ramps, and we were jumping like four or five of us. Yeah. Lay down in front of the ramp. We, were, <laughs> we was all dumb enough to lay in front of the ramp and let a homie jump us. On but we all, no one got landed on, though. We all cleared each other. You're still here. Well, yeah. Because it's usually yeah. the guy doing the jumping that like, takes the spill, not the, <laughs> yeah. not the guys that are already on the ground. Yeah. yeah. It's the di- you usually yeah, it was always the fools that didn't didn't know how to land. If yeah. They, if you didn't know how to squirrely. land, bro, like if you didn't know how to pull up that front tire and you were going on that front yeah. tire first. Yep. Yeah. Done deal. Going yep. right in. The end. Oh my God. Yeah. You don't want to end though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you didn't know to distribute that weight. And try to land on that back tire or flush, you were done deal. And throw a little style in, man, a little cross up or something. Yeah, kick the, it out. The mm. Twist. You bent that front oh, wheel <laughs> wheel when you put the when you landed on it, boy. Well, see, that was the Ooh. test as to truly if you had a frame that was you know quality made because I. I some of those cheaper frames, you'd jump and they would just crack right at the neck. Oh, no doubt. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but what was most amazing was our was our ramps. These weren't even. This was no real kind of ramps this nah. was boards boards and bricks <laughs> wooden yeah. boards yeah all kinds of makeshift like type, we were jumping type of people yeah. with how did boards somebody, and bricks how did yeah. somebody not die back then yeah it was crazy <laughs> america's most time yeah you know we were young and gritty you know what i mean we had no fears then that was the days of like like hauling down down the street on your bike into the flooded street after it rained and just sliding through it. Sliding through it, through it yeah. Oh, just throwing water just everywhere. <laughs> See, and what people don't realize, to get the wood for the ramps, we had to steal the wood from where houses oh, were being man. built oh, miles man. away and lug gotcha. all that wood back to the house. Gotcha. Our folks <laughs> was getting wood. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. random quarter pipes would pop up out of nowhere. Good old days. Yeah, man. Stealing oh, wood. <laughs> to get the jump off. <laughs> To get a jump. All right, next. It off. We got Rose and Ricky saying congrats to you guys on the upcoming show with the London Symphony Orchestra. Thank Salute. you very much. Uh, since we announced this gig, uh, there's been a lot of excitement down there. Um, the pre-sale tickets sold out. Yep. So, um, And the heads up, tomorrow morning they go on sale. The regular tickets, 9 a.m. London time. Yeah. So that would be like midnight, West Coast. 11. Three in the morning is 11? 11, yeah. Eight okay. hour difference. Um, oh, so, yeah, yeah. Eight hours from London to okay. LA. Okay, so then two in the morning, East Coast time. Yes. Um, so those tickets, what I'm getting at for, this, for that orchestra are going on 9 a.m. London time. So you guys can figure out whatever your time is, but those tickets are going on sale in the morning. Oh, yeah. It's going to be popular. And they're going to sell out in, in, they're saying like in record time. 9 a.m. 9 a. London is... 1 a.m. L.A. Okay. Yeah, I'm on. Fill it, up. Fill it up, man. Yep. All right. Next. We got Fernando up in here saying, thank you for the laughs, drama-free, and the highest podcast. One love all the way from Lake Tahoe. 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 Yes, man. Tahoe. Come on. Rasta. We got Midget Mike asking the table, what's classy when you're rich, but trashy when you're poor? Uh, hmm. That could be a lot of things. Blunts. I don't know. What is it? Is it a joke? Uh, no, he's just... It's oh. A, it's a question. It's <laughs> a question. All right, run that question one more time. What's classy when you're rich, but trashy when you're poor? <laughs> Cocaine? I don't do that sounds I'm going to say, like, clothes that everybody's wearing now with the knees cut out with holes in them and all that. It's classy when you're rich, but... Trashy when you're poor. Yeah, when you're poor, you That's don't want... That's not a bad one. That's I not wouldn't a say bad classy. one. Classy, I would say trendy. Maybe, right? Because, like, hip-hop closing. No, I think he's got a point, though, with that. But I don't know. Hmm. It's two different types of classic, because there's class on both sides. Yeah, Mike, squeeze. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I was going to say, like, you kind of said the drugs thing, but you could say, like, people who drink all day, it's seen as, like, classy for rich people, but poor people drinking all day, it can be seen as a bad thing. 
Okay. No, those poor motherfuckers drinking all fucking day and night. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so so do some of these rich fuckers though. Yeah. I'll pass on that one. I've well, been, well said, Les. I've been I've been poor and I've been rich. <laughs> I'm gonna pass on that one. That's a song right there. Country song. Yep, a country song. I've been poor and I've been rich. I still don't give a shit. <laughs> I ain't drunk. I'm just drinking. I'm just drunk. I ain't just drinking. I'm just Go drinking. wild. I ain't thinking. It is. That's the hook. We got Jesus up in here saying, yo, Steph Tone, Pedialyte is crucial. Yes. Definitely. <gasps> you did the right thing by having that Pedialyte close by, man. I think it spared me because, uh, like I said, I didn't, I didn't wake up with with any kind of <laughs> soreness that I had potentially I was like, well, if I, I, let me just survive the night and just see what happens. You did the right thing, man. And uh, I got so we, up. Got up with. Actually, I've, I actually woke up kind of nicely refreshed after it. It was a straight through the night sleep. Just you, boom. You are a little sore, though, right? No. No. no so I'm when, telling you, just it, the, I, I think those electrolytes were, were a key re, you know, recovery. Picked you back up. So when yeah. you got home, you didn't. You felt like you'd been down. You felt like a little bruised up, or no? I, 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 I just. And actually, I, I thought the the walk from the car to inside was gonna take a minute, but I actually got. <laughs> I was able to walk inside, you know, without feeling like, all right, I, I didn't just have the longest ride in a, in a forever time, you know. <laughs> you didn't need a wheelchair, right? Yeah, I thought I thought I was gonna. I was like, man, I might. Pass out in the car for like twenty minutes. <laughs> nah, I just got home, went in. I was like, I was like, you gotta just go in. You soldiered it out. Get ready, go to bed, and just go bed. Hot and, shower, and it's done. Ben Gay. Yeah. No, I. I it, it was a. It, it was a good experience. You know, it was tough. I was not. I was not prepared for it. But, you know, um, the for the bulk of it, you know, like I said, I. I got an awareness of downtown I never had before. I never, I never even considered I was going uphill, going that away. Yeah. And, and the downhill, but but actually riding up and down through it, I'm just like, wow. Yo, I'm you're you're gonna have a, a a way better time when you uh get them legs together. You're gonna love that shit. Watch. Oh yeah. I remember one time me and J Rule in 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 out in Germany. He decided, like, let's go into the city in the on bikes. So he had two bikes. So we was like, boom. Of course, he gave me the fucked up bike that was with, like, super heavy and and, and everything. But we went into the city, yo, two hours riding bikes all through the yo. My nuts were numb. <laughs> I, my legs, I, yo, that was it was hard work. You're going through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what this ride will be like if you don't get your legs together yeah, first. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. In the uh, last one so far, we got Jibby asking, is Cypress Hill going to do a Radio City Music Hall orchestra show? Love to do that. That would be awesome if we could do this in New York at Radio City Music Hall. That would be enormous. Um, let's just manifest it through this conversation. Yes! Uh, that's the plan. Let's go. Excellent. We'll set the task. All right, is that the last one? And a big shout to the real Cuban B, Madways, Bosco Drummer, and Last Minute Leo. Thank you guys for your super chat. Salute to all y'all and much love for tuning in with us on the Dr. Green Thumb Show. Spread the word, you heard. Tell your friends. Uh, this is where the high starts and ends. The highest show in the world. Uh, salute to all y'all. Much love and thank you for being here with us. Uh, make sure you check out the mix show after this. Real Psycho, Psycho Lizzie and myself. Come check us out on uh, Be Real TV 2, right here on YouTube. If you're on Twitch, just stay locked in. We're going to be um, rocking straight away. B underscore Real TV, that's the place on Twitch. And uh, if you're a member of the home site, key in. You know what I'm saying? You can watch this show and the mix show on the home site and take advantage of some of that merch, which I see some of you have uh, as of late. So, um, yeah, come on in. Check the options. You know what I mean? Be a part of the community and get both these shows there and, uh, you know, support. We got uh, new designs coming up, too, in the shop, but this is the newest one right here with the Dr. Green Thumb poster, stickers, uh, shirts, the whole deal. 
Go get down with it at www.bereal.tv. With that, um, thank you very much oh. Oh. for your time. And uh, Trace, you got any shout outs? Um, first and foremost, double XL on the Dr. Green Thumb gear. Thank you. Um, big shout out to all you guys around the table. Always fun to come in here and hang out on a Tuesday. All the guys up in the control room, everybody out in the front office, Aton, um, the dog, everybody included. Um, follow me on Instagram at Trace Nunes. Real simple at T R A C E N U N E S. Less. Yeah, definitely. I need an XL. That first one. You, We're all placing I, orders. Yeah, yeah. But um, shout out to everybody hanging out with us. Um, shout out Dr. Green Thumb Squad. And if you're on that IG, make sure you follow me, Psycho Less <laughs> Official, or follow us at the the Beat Nuts. And also, if you are checking for new gear, you want to look fresh this summer, thecycleshop.com. See you in the mix. Shout out to the Insane Asylum. Thank you guys so much. Shout out to Ray Morning Shot Films. Shout out to The Dominator. And shout out to my best friend in the whole wide world, Send Dog. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the hell of an endorsement there, Send Dog. I know, dude. It's Steph not- Tone. I don't yeah. think that's going to get you in a higher position in the hood and everything, but thank you. He wants <laughs> that sleeping bag yeah, in your just, man cave. Yeah, he just wants to stay the night. Yeah. <laughs> and get scrambled eggs. <laughs> yep. Shout out Mark Sargent, Karen B., David Weiss, Sendog, B., Trace, Psycho Leasy, Bolton, Ray Ray at Morning Shop Films, Taryn and Velvet Hammer, The Dominator, uh, A. Tom Pedro, Kenji, uh, Javi Lopez, E Zone, Bobo, uh, all the Asylum, Twitch War, Discord release. Y'all have a great week. See you guys on Friday. Ten. Yeah, shout out to all my brothers in the band Power Flow. Uh, finally got that record in the can for y'all. Just waiting now to get a release date. So, Billy Graziati, Fred Ching, and most importantly, Christian Older Wolbers, who recently broke his leg again. And just want to, you know, send him some well wishes with that. Well, and I uh, hope he feels better soon. And uh, and I hope, you know, we get that going. And again, um, peace out to everybody here and all the guys upstairs. And I see that the, what do you guys call the little little hawk thing up there? The little pet? Snacks. 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 Yeah. Snacks got him my bucket hat on. Hey, look. I didn't yeah. even notice that a little while ago. <laughs> Big shout out to Snacks. Take the time to put the time into yourself. Swallow that. TV.